working it out in your wilderness. Working it out in your wilderness. How do I get through the moment that I find myself in? That's what we're going to talk about this morning. Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday morning, Thirsty Thursday. Hope you're thirsty for the word and impartation of God's word, dropping some gems for you on this morning so you can live out the balance of your day, living by the word and working out your wilderness. How many of you have experienced some wilderness? Maybe you're in the wilderness right now. Good morning, Brenda. How are you? Good morning, Sean. How are you? You know, it's a I don't know about you, but the fact of the matter is you're going to deal with the wilderness, whether it's finances, whether it's family, whether it's physical, whether it's decision, whatever the case may be, the loss of a loved one, you're going to deal with wilderness. And how do you get through the wilderness? That's what we're talking about this morning. Let me greet a couple of people and then we're going to get right into it. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, Jacqueline. How are you on this morning? Good morning, Elder Sherry. How are you on this morning? Verena, how are you on this morning? What a wonderful morning it is. Good morning, Angela. How are you on this morning? I got a word for you on this morning and I want to share this with you. I don't know about you, but I've had, um, I've had, um, some wilderness days in my life. And um, I may not be in a wilderness now, but I know one thing about life. If you keep living, you're going to have to deal with some wilderness situations. Finances, uh, the loss of a loved one, uh, the broken heart, uh, decision making, whatever the case may be. If you've had to deal with uh, some wilderness situations, put it in the chat area. Let's get into the word this morning. Working it out in the wilderness. How do I work it out in my wilderness? The text to talk, the takeaway, five minutes or less. Here we go. Here's the text. Deuteronomy 8 and 4 and Deuteronomy 29 and 5. Deuteronomy 8 and 4 and Deuteronomy 29 and 5. But the revelation that you get in the chat area so others can get it as well. Your feet never swelled. Your garments never grew old. Deuteronomy 29 and 5. For 40 years I led you in the wilderness. Your clothes did not wear out, nor did the sandals on your feet. God talking through the pen of Moses, and he's letting the people of Israel know, a million and a half of them, this is how I dealt with you in your wilderness. How do you deal with your wilderness? Three things I want you to grab a hold of that perhaps the children of Israel miss. Acknowledge, first thing, acknowledge God's faithfulness. Acknowledge God's faithfulness. God says, look here, I'm hanging in there with you. I'm still in there with you. Though I got upset with you, when you came out of Egypt initially, I told Moses, I'm going to destroy you. Moses pleaded on your behalf and said to me, if you destroy them and start over a brand new people with me, then everybody in the known world, God, will say that that's all you did was to bring them out to kill them. God says, okay, God, I got it, Moses. All right, I'm not going to do that. So you have to acknowledge God's faithfulness. The second thing you need to do when you're in the wilderness of your situation, accept God's blessings. Accept God's blessings. You remember uh, when the children of Israel says, you know what, we're sick of this manna. What is it anyhow? That was the interpretation of the Hebrew of it. What is this anyhow? And we're sick of it. God says, okay, I got you. I'm going to send in some quail coming in over the Mediterranean. They're going to land and you're going to eat as much as you want until it come out of your nose. That's in the text, baby. He says, look here. You need to understand something. My manna was sufficient, enough protein, enough carbs to get you through. But I'll give you even more. So there are times when you're in the wilderness. Don't do as the children of Israel. Accept the blessings that God has for you in the wilderness, in the wilderness. 
Here's the third thing. The third thing is this. Be about your future, not your past. Be about your future, not your past. Oh, everybody goes through something. You ain't new. There ain't nothing. Who do you think? You, don't be brand new up in here. Everybody deals with something in life. And you cannot relive yesterday. You cannot. You cannot change what took place last week. Don't be about yesterday, but be about your future. The children of Israel were forever preoccupied with what they had. The romanticizing of slavery, if you will, of bondage. <laughs> Why you got us out here? I remember when we had leeks and onions and cucumbers and what have you. Stop. Be about your future, not your past. What's your takeaway as to how you work out being in the wilderness? How do you work that out? Look for God's hand in the midst of the wilderness. Look for his hand. His hand is there. You may not be able to see it initially, but when you begin to focus, you will see God's hand, even in your wilderness. The Lord be with you today. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. Got more morning manner for you on tomorrow morning. Share this man. If it bless you, bless somebody else.